Now that the consensus is growing that the Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates in September, the question becomes how big the first rate cut will be and what effects will it have on the economy and retirement. To answer this question, it helps to have some context. Remember when COVID became a pandemic and governments all over the world shut down everything to stop its spread? Well, to prevent a recession or even a depression in the United States, the federal government poured stimulus money into the economy and the Federal Reserve increased the number of dollars in circulation by a whopping 40%. This may have prevented a depression and it may have shortened the resulting recession, but it also led to 9% inflation, which is the highest it's been in a really long time. To combat this big jump in inflation, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates to reduce the number of dollars in circulation and put them back into bank accounts. This has tamed inflation down from 9% to 3%, well on its way to the Fed's target of 2%. This also has had the impact of slowing down the economy. In fact, the economy has slowed down maybe too fast because the number of people unemployed is starting to rise. The Fed's solution is to start cutting interest rates from the current high of 5.5%. But here, the Fed has to be careful. Cutting too fast could bring back inflation, but cutting too slow could tip the economy into a recession. So this gets back to the original question. How big will the first rate cut be and what effects will it have on the economy and retirement? I think the number depends a lot on the data coming out in the next few weeks, especially the jobs report early in September. But I believe that the range could be as low as no change, which is unlikely, to a cut as big as half a percentage point, with a quarter point cut being the most likely. Regardless of what that number is, the anticipation of a cut is already having one big impact. Gold prices have reached another record high by breaking $2,500 per ounce for the first time in history. The reason why is lower interest rates means that all things being equal, the value of the dollar goes down and it takes more dollars to buy the same amount of gold. Interest rates aren't the only factor that impacts gold prices, but right now it's the factor that's likely to change soon here in the United States. Other factors have generally favored higher gold prices, like increasing world instability, the spreading war between Ukraine and Russia, and Hamas and Israel are two such examples. Also, it's getting harder to mine gold and gold is a limited resource, which means coupled with higher demand from investors in China, as well as central banks, there's upward pressure on gold prices. So what does this mean for the investor who's saving for retirement? Because it's hard to predict what the conditions will be when you retire, a prudent strategy is to make sure that your retirement portfolio is diversified. Diversification to most people means having cash, maybe some stocks, and maybe some bonds. But cash, stocks, and bonds generally all move up and down together. Gold is known as an alternative asset, which means that its prices usually move in the opposite direction of cash, stocks, and bonds. So. In uncertain times like these, it can help to diversify your portfolio to include gold, especially for retirement. One way to add precious metals to your retirement portfolio is through a precious metal or gold IRA. There are several tax advantages for investing this way. I have one, and mine is from U.S. Money Reserve. 